Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin. Hamdan yuafi na'amahu yukafi yu mazida. Ya Rabbana laka alhamdu kama yanbaghi li jilali wajik wa la azim sultanik. Subhanaka la nuhsifana an alayka anta kama athnayta ala nafsik. Falaka alhamdu hatta tarda wa laka alhamdu ila radit wa laka alhamdu ba'da rida. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Sayyidina Muhammad fil awalin. Wa salli wa sallim ala Sayyidina Muhammad fil akhirin. Wa salli wa sallim ala Sayyidina Muhammad fi kulli waqtin wa hin. Wa salli wa sallim ala Sayyidina Muhammad fil malil ala ila yawm al-deen. Wa salli wa sallim ala Sayyidina Muhammad hatta tarith al-arda wa man alayha anta khayru wa arifin. Nawaitu ta'alam wa ta'alim wa tadakur wa ta'kir wa nafa'a antifa'a wa lifadu wa l-istifada. Wa al-hatha ala tamasuk bi kitab Allah wa bi sunnat al-rasulih. Sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Wa du'a ila al-huda wa dalalata ala al-khayr. Ibtigha wa shilla wa mardatihi wa qurbihi wa fawabihi subhanahu wa ta'ala. In our continuation of the look of the of the book, our reading of the book of the Imam Rahimahullah Ta'ala, Abdullah Sarajuddin al Husseini, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, our Master Muhammad, the Messenger of Allah, his sublime character and exalted attributes. We're on page 25, we read about his great dignity, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as well as his stateliness. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam possessed great dignity and Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala endowed him with honor and nobility and clothed him with the mantle of eminence sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallama in akram ala allah wa la fakhr he's the most noble in the sight of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa la fakhr even with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in surah al-hujurat subhanahu wa ta'ala in akramakum and allah atqaqum that the most honorable in the sight of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are those who are the most conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself, he said, Ana atqaqum, yani billah. I am the most conscious of any one of you as it relates to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa sallam adorned and in the robe of honor and nobility subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fi kulli al-atwar and each and every single of the wills that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam traverses and sojourns through sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam wa sallam. One of the reasons why Yawm Al-Qiyamah, as in the tradition of Sahih Muslim, that the Prophet Sallallahu raises aloft liwa al-karama, and the standard of honor, Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wa Sahih Wa Sallama, biyadi, as he says, inside of my hand, and in the hands of no other, but the hands of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wa Sahih Wa Sallama, the hand of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, calls Yadullah, he calls it the hand of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Tirmidhi and others narrated that Hindi bin Abi Hala, the stepson of the Prophet Sallallahu said, describing the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi had great and stately attributes and was honored as such by others. His face shined like the light of the full moon Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Our Master Ali, Karam Allah who said, describing the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whoever saw him unexpectedly would be awe-stricken, and whoever came to know him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would love him من خالته معرفة أحبة أكد الحديث التلمذي that whoever would intermingle with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam معرفة have an experiential knowledge of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by virtue of intermingling with the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, holding his good companionship, Ahabbahu, and he would love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. No doubt, that's one of the endeavors that we have in the month of Rabi'a, and of engaging such works like this. And we engage these works, inshallah ta'ala, with an objective, and the objective being love, as the Imams Rahimahullah Ta'ala, that they say that knowledge is the prerequisite for love, and so thereby love becomes the aim and the objective of knowledge in and of itself. And so always, inshallah ta'ala, our trajectory and our point of departure, inshallah ta'ala, should be sound to Jahan Nabi as it relates to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sahi wa sallama, using this as a means of intermingling with the Rasul sallallahu wa sallama, familiarizing ourselves with the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallama, getting to know the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sahi wa sallama, with a degree of intimacy 
as a means of becoming intimate with him وسلم, and loving him. The companions were unable to bring themselves to look at him وسلم, closely because of the power of his dignity and gravity. وسلم, if you ask me to describe the Prophet وسلم, I couldn't. That's the words of Sayyidina Amr ibn As and he's somebody who was who quote who was in the presence of the Prophet وسلم, يعني, as a disbeliever for 21 years يعني, and as a believer for two years يعني, yet still quote unquote from the age of Nabuwa that he was unable to describe the Prophet وسلم, because he was unable to gaze at the blessed face of the Prophet Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sallam is in that sense the parallel as we get in the hadith of Abu Huraira and others. It's as if the sun orbits in his face. And it says there's an inability, quote unquote, for somebody to gaze at the sun or to fear that they will lose their sight. And even more so, the son of the cosmos, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sallam. The companions were unable to bring themselves and look at him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, closely because of the power of his dignity and gravity. But it's also a testimony to the hearts of the companions, that was filled with reverence and respect and exaltation of the Prophet This is why our descriptions of him come from the youngest of them. As the Imams of Shema'el, that inform us as here, being corroborated by the great Sheikh Abdullah Sarajuddin, that it was only those in their infancy yani, as children dun al bulugh yani beneath yani adulthood beneath the age of maturity who were able to gaze upon the prophet sallallahu and that was not just due to an inherent purity that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affords all children but it was an inherent purity that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in particular and especially afforded the companions of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam as children or those of them who had a hand in raising him before his prophetic miss mission, such as Hind ibn Abihara or our master. Yani, this is why our descriptions of him has come from the youngest of them, or those of them who had a hand in raising him. I should say, or those of them who he had a hand in raising them before his prophetic prophetic mission. It's not saying the Hind or saying Ali who raises the Prophet وسلم, as one could erroneously understand from the Ibarah here, from the expression here, but rather these are the ones who were raised by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying the Hind ibn Abi Hala and it being the son of Sayyidina Khadija radiallahu anha wardaha and likewise saying Ali rahimahullah ta'ala from the age of four he's raised by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi with the hukum, the hukum, that they're still in infancy. And due to that inherent, mashallah ta'ala, purity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala afforded them, yani bin Nabi, by virtue of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then they were able, mashallah ta'ala, to get a glimpse of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi that sufficed that impression of that noble countenance sallallahu alayhi wa sallam upon their hearts and minds. So that later now, when they grow and they become of age, that thereby they can recount and they can relate and narrate the description of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to human beings for all eternity. This is attested to by Muslims' narration and the authority of Abdullah ibn Amr and ibn Al-As, who said, "I kept the company of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam for a long time and heard many of his sayings." and memorized thousands of his parables. Despite all of that, out of shyness from him and reverence for him, I never once looked directly at him. And if I were asked to describe him, I'd be unable to do so. Do so. As the poet said, woman, woman, you share bih abahu fala zalam. He said that about Sayyidina Hassan and Sayyidina Hussein, woman, you share bih abahu fala zalam. That whoever yani, it, it resembles their father, then they can't be somebody who does wrong. 
In this case, you see Abdullah ibn Amr here resembling his father Amr ibn As, being unable to describe the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, wa sallam, due to those great prophetic attributes that they had inside of their hearts. Because of his great dignity and gravity, those who sat with him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, would be awe stricken by him and might even tremble violently before him sallallahu alayhi and regardless of gender and coming into the presence of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is mashallah ta'ala a very great honor but likewise also the honor quote unquote once grip in the heart it can also affect the form such that they will shake and shiver in the presence of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and they would only be stilled by his stillness as the Prophet said, the poor woman may tranquility descend upon her. He said, Upon this, he would calm them down by being kind and gentle with them. Ibn Majah and Hakim narrated that Abu Mas'ud al Badri said, A man came and stood before the Prophet and was overcome with violent trembling and dread the prophet وسلم, said to him calm down for i'm no king or tyrant i am but the son of a woman of the Quraysh who would eat dried meat in mecca qadid but when the rasul وسلم, speaks with a heart of humility okay وسلم, the man then spoke of his need and so the prophet وسلم, stood and said oh people it, is, it has been revealed to me that you should humble yourselves or humble yourselves so no one will oppress another and no one will be proud. Servants of Allah, be brothers. Qayla bint Makhrama radiallahu ta'ala anha wardaha said, when I saw the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sitting humbly on his heels, I began to shiver in fear. Okay, she visits the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is inside of the masjid and the edgeless qurfasa and the prophet is squatting and then thereby she says i've just begun to walk to shiver quake and shiver out of fear the meanings of faraq in the arabic language is fear and it's a type of fear but ordinarily when it grips your heart faraq to disperse that you run a thousand miles and running. But here the awe of the Prophet وسلم, is stopped there in their tracks. And she just began to shiver and shake in the presence of the Prophet. وسلم. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, without looking round to see me, poor girl, be at peace. In another riwayah, the Prophet, وسلم, a man addresses the Rasul, because the Rasul, وسلم, his head is lowered. So in terms of his eyes, his eyes are not fixated upon Sayyidah and Bint Makhrama, Layla Bint Makhrama, Radiallahu Anha, Qayla Bint Makhrama, Radiallahu Anha, Wardaha, Wa Illa, the Prophet Sayyidah, he has a 360 degree peripheral vision. The eyes don't necessarily, quote unquote, have to be fixated in order for the Prophet Sayyidah to see that which is in front of him or behind him or besides him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But still, of the companions addresses the Prophet وسلم, saying, Ya Rasulullah, unzur ila al miskina O Messenger of God, look at the poor woman. And that's when the Prophet وسلم, says, Al miskina a poor girl here, Ali has sakina, be at peace. But here, the, literally, the poor woman or the what this poor woman may tranquility, serenity descend upon her. The Prophet وسلم, says, When he said it, Allah Ta'ala removed a fear that had entered my heart and she said she became still, Yani. Now she's at still. Now she's at peace. Now she was serene. These stories of the companions clearly show the power of his dignified composure. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Wa sallam. Another example of this is the story of Abu Mas'ud al-Badri, radiallahu anhu arda, who said, I was beating a boy servant of mine for some offense. When I heard a voice from behind me say, watch out, Abu Mas'ud. Out of anger, I ignored him until he was upon me. 
and I saw that it was the messenger of Allah sallallahu when I saw him sallallahu the stick fell from my hand out of fear of him oh sure and I mean look this Abu Mas'ud al-Badri these are the men of steel these heroic figures of the companions men of battle men of war did the presence of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam pushed him into a state of great fear. He said to me, by Allah, Allah has more power over you than you have over this boy. I replied, by Allah, O Messenger of Allah, I will never beat another of my servants again. One narration has it. I said, O Messenger of Allah, he is here by free for Allah's sake. He replied, if not, the fire will surely touch you. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is one of the reasons that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is held in great fear sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and muhakkim and al haq that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam can decide the fate of mankind on the authority of the divine subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and by virtue of him, people are raised to the heights of Jannah, to the highest echelons of paradise. Likewise, people are damned in a sair into the abysses of hell. Zainab Thaqafiyah, radiallahu ta'ala anha, the wife of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who said, the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, give charity to women, even if it be from your own jewelry. I went back to Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, a husband, and said to him, you're a man of scant means. And the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa has commanded us to give charity. Go and ask him. And if it is acceptable for me to do so, I will give you my charity. If not, I will give it to somebody else. And so Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, radiallahu anhu, he said, go and see him for yourself. I went. And there at the door, the messenger of Allah وسلم, was a woman of the Ansar with the very same question I had. The messenger of Allah وسلم, was an awe inspiring figure. And so when Bilal happened to come out, we said to him, go to the messenger of Allah وسلم, and tell him that two women are at the door asking if they might give charity to their husbands and the orphans in their care. And do not tell him who we are. And so Bilal went in to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and asked him, and the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to him, who are they? He said, a woman of the Ansar and Zainab. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, hey, you Zainab, any which Zainab? Lots of Zainabs in Medina. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam married to a Zainab Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Prophet has a daughter called Zainab Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Hey, you Zainab. Which one of the Zainabs? And so Sayyidina Bilal radiallahu anhu wa he said, Imra'atu Abdullah, is the wife of Abdullah. And that day shows you the shatn of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud rahimahullah ta'ala, because there's a lot of Abdullahs as well. But when he just says Abdullah, then khalas, the Rasul understands which Abdullah. It's Abdullah ibn Mas'ud rahimahullah ta'ala. And so the Messenger of Allah sallallahu wa sallam answered, they have two rewards. One for keeping family ties and the other for charity. Inshallah ta'ala, we ask Allah ta'ala for tawfiq, inshallah ta'ala. We have a short class today, inshallah, asking Allah ta'ala for another, and that Allah ta'ala capacitates us, subhanahu wa ta'ala, by virtue of the Prophet sallallahu increases in knowledge. So as we increase in love of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa sallam, unto the love of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa for us is sanctioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the source of all love. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.